From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. As always, I open this program by saying we have a very exciting program for you today. But I think that this one is one of the most important that we've ever done. And I trust that God will use it in your life as he's using it in my life. And uh, as we go into this first headline, I think uh, you're going to understand why I put it right up front. The Trump era. Absolutely, we have a brand new president now. And uh, you know how far, how fast he's going to go. We're going to sort of talk about that today with our guest. And then this is quite important. World silence on Iran's threats to destroy Israel will end with the Trump era. Whoa, Netanyahu said that. And we're going to examine that too to see if they're going to remain close friends. Right now they are but we'll see what happens. And then Trump aims for unquestionable military dominance. Well, you know we're not now. We used to be, but we certainly are not now. But yeah, that's his goal. And so far, we're going to be talking about what he's already accomplished and how he's going to accomplish that one also. I just want to update you a little bit before we get into welcoming our wonderful guest today. And on Jack's recovery, as I came in, everybody was saying, how's he doing, Rexella? How's he doing? He is doing wonderful. And I know why. God is raising him up, and thank you for your prayers. Oh, how the Lord has blessed in an unusual way. And I said to our guest a moment ago, he has made that, um, that place an absolute mission field. I've told you before, I walk out of the room, and when I come back, the nurse says, my, he knows the Bible, and he certainly does. And by the way, he's enjoyed all of your letters, all of your birthday cards, and uh, your encouraging words, your prayers. Thank you so much. And the Lord willing, I'm going to bring him home in a couple of days, and uh, he'll be back with us before you know it. But today... It is such a joy for me to welcome our guest. It's Dr. Robert Jeffers, coming all the way from Dallas, Texas. He is senior pastor of the 13,000-member First Baptist Church there and a Fox News contributor. Absolutely, I see him oftentimes on there, and he's also uh, a professor at the Dallas Theological Seminary. Oh, my, he has so much to offer the world. And I'm so grateful that you could come and be our guest today, oh, Doctor. Thank you, Rexella. Thank Good you to be with you. Thank th you. Thank you. Well, we're going to go into this <laughs> first headline, Dr. Jeffords. And uh, I have something to ask him, of course, about what it's all about. Because he knows, probably from day one, take a look, Time Magazine. Donald Trump, the 45th President of the United States of America. Well, one of the first to say I am going to back this man is our guest today. And that's one of my first questions that I would like to ask him. Dr. Jeffords, you are such a man of God. You have this huge church and a huge outreach for Christ. And for you to come out and say you are going to back this man, how did the Holy Spirit guide you in that direction? Well, Rexella, I believe that our nation was in such a downward spiral that the number one quality we needed in somebody to reverse that downward trajectory was the gift of leadership. And I believe that Donald Trump had the leadership skills necessary to turn our country around. And look, uh, I've known President Trump now for two years, and I tell people I'm not under any illusion that he believes exactly like we do on every issue. But what I appreciate about the president is he doesn't marginalize and demonize evangelical Christians like the last administration did. And so that's why I have supported Donald Trump since day one. I was really his first visible evangelical pastor to support him. And I believe God has raised him up for a great purpose. In fact, uh, at his inauguration, uh, I preached the sermon before the inauguration and I reminded him of what I had said to him before the first primary vote was cast. I said, 
president, or at that time I said, Mr. Trump, I believe you're going to be the next president of the United States. And if that happens, it's because God has raised you up for a special purpose. And then I quoted Daniel 2, it is God who establishes and removes leaders. And I think that's what he's done in this case. Amen. I, we agree. My husband, you know, very much <laughs> agrees with what you uh, have done and had to say about uh, Donald Trump. And certainly he is leading us in the right direction. He chose the right vice president. I'll tell you, uh, Mr. Pence, he yes. said, I'll never forget the number one time that I ever heard him speak. He said, I am a Christian. I am an American. And I'm a Republican in that order. That's what he had to say. Do you recall that? I, I do. And I've gotten to know uh, Vice President Pence. He is a godly man. And I don't often share conversations I've had with the president, but I don't think he would mind me saying this. No. He introduced me to uh, Mike Pence and he said, you know, Pastor, what is great about the vice president is he's opposite me in every way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's leadership, good. though, yes. to pick somebody, yes. whether you're picking a vice president or a mate, for that that's matter, right. who that's can be right. opposite you and uh, shore up the deficiencies. Absolutely. That, may be there. that was a wise decision. It Absolutely. Was. And he's out uh, the president. Our president now has quite an agenda. And I'd like for us to just take a look at some of the things that he promised and that he's already doing. There you are, the Trump era. How far, how fast will he uh, shift the United States? Well, let's go on to see some of the things he's already done. You'll recognize it. Walmart to boost U.S. job count by 10,000. That's great. GM to invest $1 billion in the United States after Trump scolding. I'll tell you, he's after everybody to keep everything we make here in the United States. Trump moves fast on oil pipelines. There again. And then Rust Belt responds to Trump. Now, they feel that he's a strong leader and that he's bringing back the jobs that they have lost, and therefore they're very much behind him. Trump rallied back on track as Wall Street snaps skid. Well, that shows something that uh, they believe in what he's doing in keeping our jobs in America, and so that end of the skid. Focus on Trump policies boosts the dollar. Absolutely, they're seeing where he's going. And Dow finally crosses that magic mark, 20,000. Now that's a 207% climb from the 2009 uh, doldrums that it was in. How wonderful to know that we are on the way up, not the way out. And uh, doctor, I would like to ask you again, isn't it true that's one thing that you absolutely saw could happen in this man? He's doing what he promised. Absolutely, and we saw that just recently in his selection of Judge Neil Gorsuch as a Supreme Court justice. I mean, uh, I think that is the issue that motivated evangelical Christians yes. to support President Trump, and that would be to have a conservative Supreme Court justice, and we're seeing him fulfill promise after promise. And Rexella, I often say to evangelical Christians, look, uh, we're not going to agree with everything that he ends up doing. We're not going to win on every issue with President Trump, but we would lose on every issue with a President Clinton. And so I think evangelicals need to keep that in mind. Amen. Very well put, Doctor, really. Well, one of the huge promises, we've been talking about the promises and how he's already fulfilling them. One of the huge promises that he has made to us, he is going to make our military what it used to be, number one in the world. We were, and uh, I never forget, you know, I was, I was saying to our guest today, Dr. Jeffers, that my husband and I used to go to Belgium all the time, and I was so proud of our country. I really was. It was wonderful to talk to Jack's relatives about our country. But then there came a time when we began to decline. And, uh, you know, we are, we are not number one at all anymore. But take a look at what's happening out there and why we need to be number one again and why President Trump has this in his agenda. Take a look, please, at this next uh, headline. Trump aims for unquestioned U.S. military dominance. Now, he's promised to rebuild America's vast military, and I believe he's going to do it. Then, going on, well, what's happened out there? The S-500 to strengthen Russia's air defense system for the 21st century. You know what? 
they're number one with China right now. They're saying, you're not going to get ahead of us. We're going to progress also. Russia's test fires uh, a Topol-M intercontinental ballistic missile. Well, I'll tell you, the ballistic missiles are very, very important, and they're way ahead of us on that also. And, of course, China must expand nuclear arsenal in response to Trump. Of course, they say we want to force the U.S. to respect us. And China says it will protect the South China Sea sovereignty. You know, not only in the air, but also in the sea. They want to take over. And we need to build up our Navy again also, every aspect of our military. And the Philippine Defense Chief, China Sea, militarization, very troubling. They, they see what's happening, and so that troubles them. All right, here's something. You know, our nuke deal with Iran will not be renegotiated under Trump. Well, that deputy foreign minister said that not long ago. And then Iran promises to surprise Trump huh? if he cancels the nuclear deal. Now, in my opinion, and I'm going to our guest in just a moment, I don't believe that Trump is going to be intimidated at all. They're going to uh, surprise him. I don't think he's going to be surprised. I think that he's investigated pretty well what's going on in Iran. Do you agree with that, Dr. Jeffords? I do agree with it. And I believe that President Trump understands that the number one responsibility of government is to keep its citizens safe. Uh, in the inaugural sermon, I preached from the book of Nehemiah about when God chooses a leader. And I reminded the president that when God called Nehemiah to restore Israel, the first task he gave Nehemiah was to build a giant wall around Jerusalem to protect the citizens. The president laughed at that, but he got the point. And I believe he believes that we ought to keep America safe. And you know, Rexella, there are a lot of Christians who are mixed up about this. They oh, yes. think it's unchristian to protect your nation. And we ought to all live as one in this world and have no nations. Well, that may be God's plan for the new heaven and the new earth, but it's not his plan for this earth. Genesis 9 says God has ordained governments. Acts 17, he has created the boundaries in which we live. And that means that government has a responsibility to protect its citizens at all costs. We know we're going to be going uh, into another part here uh, in just a moment uh, concerning Israel, that uh, they live under a threat. In fact, I talked to a gentleman the other day, a wonderful Jewish man, and he said, you know, there are a million people over there who are being threatened all the time. We're going to talk about that yeah. in just a moment, too, uh, Doctor. All right, but I do want to bring emphasis on something that is very, very important. And, uh, you know, Dr. Jeffers has written a wonderful book, Not All Roads Lead to Heaven. How true that is. <laughs> not all roads. Everybody wants to get everybody right. there. But not every road leads to heaven, that's for sure. And he agrees totally with the... With the Bible that says there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Which brings me to our offer of the week, and it is eternity. Where will you be when you leave this life? Eternity. It is so very, very important. Eternity. Who, where, when, and why? Take a look, please, at the commercial. Eternity. Who, Where, When, Why is the most astounding biblical video study ever produced by doctors Jack and Rexella Van Epi. Out of hundreds of predictions prophesied, the greatest and final sign is about to happen when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The event is about to happen, even at the door. Could it occur in 2017 or 18? Be ready. Why? Eternity is forever. Here are seven of the numerous questions answered on this video. One, which of the world's religions is the only one that can get you to heaven? Two, what do most people today believe about heaven and hell? Three, what form did Jesus have before he came to earth, spirit or bodily? Four, what is the rapture and what will happen to our bodies at the time of the rapture? Five, how could the Old Testament saints get to heaven if Christ's blood had not yet been shed. Six, how can we be saved from death, the grave and assured of heaven? Seven, could Jesus return in our generation? Order this all important video today. 
oh, please don't put up ordering this as soon as possible. There's the 800 number and there's the address, eternity. And as I've said before so many times on this program, do you know where you will spend eternity? We're all going there. We're all going to lead this life. And you know, uh, Dr. Jeffers' book is so true. Not all real roads lead to heaven. So you want to be on the right road and Jesus is the only way for you to know that you'll be in heaven for eternity. Make the call, please. We want to hear from you. Now, I referred to Israel a moment ago, and you know how passionate my husband is about Israel, how much he loves Israel, and how God is on the side of Israel, and how there are going to be some who are going to try and destroy Israel. And of course, we know that there's going to be a lineup of Russia and China and Iran Iran's one of them, and uh, all of the nations surrounding Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and all of them will march on Israel. I'm going to put something that my husband said on the screen right now, please. Just take a look. In Ezekiel 38 and 39, we have the whole picture. It says, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. All right. Gog is the end time ruler, which probably could be Putin. And then the Scythians became the Megagites and then called Russians. Meshach is Moscow, Tobol is Tobolsk, southwest of Siberia. So it's all there in Russia. And they call for help. And that's China, Revelation 16 12 who comes down, and that's Daniel 11:44, the North, Russia, and the East, China getting together for one of the greatest and most powerful armies in history. Then in Ezekiel 38, 5, you have Persia, which is Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, Lebanon, and you have Tagarma. That's Turkey, where the problem is right now. Who will go along with them? All part of the 10 world foundation. Man, Jesus is about to come. Now, here's why it will be in our lifetime. First of all, they invade Israel. The whole war is fought as they move down to that country. There was no Israel to invade till 1948. What? The Romans took the Jews out of there in 70 AD and 2,000 years passed. And they raised their flag in 48, saying, this is the six-pointed star of David, and we're Israel, and we're back. There's one more thing. They have to be in control of Jerusalem, and that has happened, and that's what all the fuss is about. So we are ready for the greatest war in history, and it's all happened just in the last few years. Oh my, oh my, how true that is. Now, I've been reading to you, friends, some of the things that Iran's doing along with China and Russia and uh, that group of, of nations there. But Iran stands out as far as the, what I'm going to be reading to you right now in this next headline. And how true Jack is when he gave all that scripture on the army coming from the north. Look, Netanyahu. World silence on Iran's threats to destroy Israel will end with Trump. Now, Prime Minister Netanyahu repeated his long belief that Iran poses the greatest danger, and I didn't realize that, the greatest danger to Israel. And he says that Trump is going to now take control, that they do not march on them, at least right away, as long as um, he's helping the Jewish people. I'm going to go to our guest. Certainly we know what Iran is doing right now. They're developing all kinds of things that they're not supposed to under the, the pact that we've had with them. Uh, doctor, do you agree with that? Do you believe that Iran's going to be still going ahead with what they purpose toward Israel? Absolutely. And Rexilla, I think it's important for the audience to understand whether we're talking about the Iranians, whether we're talking about the Palestinians, they, do, they just don't deny Israel's right to inhabit the land, they deny Israel's right to even exist. Yes. They have as their goal to, right, to wipe the Jews off the face of the earth. 
And that's why we've got to be sure, as Americans, we're on the right side of this issue. You know, in Joel chapter 2, God said he would curse any nation that seeks to divide the land that he gave to Israel. And that's why I said that John Kerry, Barack Obama, were not only on the wrong side of history, they were on the wrong side of God on this issue. Oh, absolutely. The issues we, we talk about, the land we talk about, about the West Bank and Gaza and the Golan Heights, that's all Israel that yes. God gave to his people. Yes. And it's theirs forever. Yes. And that's why I think it's important that we understand what the real heart of this conflict is. And that is, what has God promised to Israel? God will bless any nation that encourages Israel and protects Israel, and he will curse any nation that rejects Israel. Right. And you know, when they became a nation in 1948 and then took over uh, uh, Jerusalem in 67, uh, they didn't just take over uh, and go in there and say, we're taking your land. They owned that land already, that's actually. Right. God gave them that land that's from right. the beginning. And that's why every prime minister, from David Ben-Gurion to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, goes to the Bible to yes. say this belongs to Israel. Yeah. Even if you don't believe like we do that the Bible's the inspired word of God, at least it's recorded history yes. that they've had that land for thousands and thousands of years. And Rexella, one thing, I had somebody say to me who was a member of the Israeli military, he said, Pastor, what if France voted and said, we think you all ought to divide up Washington, D.C. and allow ISIS to inhabit part of it. How would you respond to that? That that's exactly what is happening when we tell Israel or other people tell Israel, you need to divide Jerusalem and let your enemies inhabit it. My, oh my, that's a good point. You know, when they come in here and say, you have to do this or that to our land. And you know, this sort of brings me to a point, friends, where I want to emphasize, if you will, the importance of us knowing where we are in Bible prophecy because it points to the return of the Lord. The Lord's coming very soon, isn't he? Yes. Doctor. Either you... he's coming or we're going, but it's going to be over very <laughs> soon, one way or the other. Amen. <laughs> when I, when I talk about the rapture, you know, Jack focuses on that a lot. How the Lord's going to say, come up hither and uh, the rapture. But he is coming back, and he is the only one that can bring peace on earth. In fact, the other day I was saying, if you could ask a leader of uh, the world a question, what would it be? Well, what's going to happen to this world? That's what she said to me. Yes. And we know what's going to happen. That's right. The Lord is coming back, and he's going to bring peace, isn't he? That's right. But we can have peace before that, can't we, doctor? If only we open our hearts to the Lord. That's right. And as excited as we've been, Rexel, about what's happened in this election, I want to be the first to say salvation is not going to come from any president. It's going to come from the Savior, Jesus Christ. And all that really matters is, do we have a relationship with him? And would it be appropriate right now for us to just give people an opportunity to do that? Absolutely. We're going to do that. And I'm so happy that on every single program, Jack and I open this door to our audience to say, where will you spend eternity? Are you really ready for what tomorrow even would offer? It doesn't really matter about some of the things in this world, but how good it is to know that we're ready if the Lord should come. Jesus died for you. He died for me. Will you open your heart to Jesus, the Son of God, and say, Lord, come into my heart. I want to be saved. And as Dr. Jeffers lead, leads us in prayer right now, will you pray this prayer with him, accepting Christ as your Savior? Doctor. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I know I have failed you in many ways, and I'm truly sorry for the sins in my life. But I believe what you've said, that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for me, to take the punishment from you that I deserve. And right now, at this very moment, I'm trusting in Jesus and Jesus alone to save me, to forgive me of all of my sins. Thank you for forgiving me and help me to spend the rest of my life serving you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer, that's the greatest thing that you could ever do in this life and the greatest prayer you'll ever pray. 
You know, so many of us do go to church today, and we're praying all kinds of prayers. But this is the most important prayer. Did you open your heart to the Lord? Please write to me if you did. I would love to send you this little booklet for steps in a new direction. And uh, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Jeffers again on our program next week about uh, some of the things that people are getting involved in. Drugs, alcohol. We need a great revival in this country. And if you have that in your life, you've just been forgiven. How wonderful it is to know that the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. I don't care what it is. So write to me. I'll send this little booklet for steps in a new direction. You know, Dr. Jeffers, it's so wonderful to be forgiven. Yes. I don't care what it is. That's right. You know, as I've said so often, we even got a, a letter from somebody on death row in California. And he said, I'm, going, I'm condemned to die, Rexella, but I was watching your program. I accepted the Lord as my Savior, and now I'm ready to die. Yes. because I've accepted him. We can be forgiven of anything. That's right. And we're all on death row, whether we realize it or not. <laughs> right. So that's why we need God's forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, friends, I'm just so happy if you opened your heart to the Lord. So please let me know. I'll get this little book in the mail as soon as I hear from you. And now, eternity. Oh, my. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is one of the most important uh, videos that Jack and I have ever done. It covers so many, many things, so many, many questions that you have. And so I just want to say the importance of ordering it right now. There's the 800 number, and there's the address, and here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Eternity. Who, where, when, why? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I just want to say, again, the most important question that you will ever have to answer is where will you spend eternity? So you'll want to order this eternity and maybe order a few, like I said before. Give one to the one that you love the most because you want them to go out into eternity and be with the Lord. This will answer all your questions. So make the call right away. You know, friends, I, I really love this wonderful thought that I'm going to leave you with right now. God's forgiveness always comes with another, what? Another chance. How wonderful that he opens the door for us to have a happy life walking with him. And God bless you. We we'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.